Hello, welcome to, um, although this says introduction to two-way tables, um, we are kind of reinforcing what we've learned about two-way tables and relative frequencies. So the learning objectives for this lesson are to be able to identify the joint frequency or the marginal frequency of a two-way table and also be able to calculate the relative frequency by row table or of a two-way table, two-way frequency table, sorry. Um, so we're gonna be taking what we've learned over the past couple days and just kind of reiterating it, making sure that we have a pretty solid understanding of two-way tables and their relative frequencies. So let's start with what is the definition of relative frequency? So we talked about this the other day, but just a general definition, something that you can put into your own words. Um, a relative frequency is how often something occurs divided by all outcomes. So remember, when we talk about relative frequency, we're looking really at like the percentage of a situation. <clears throat> so for example, if an LZ hockey team won nine games from a total of 12 games, the just frequency would be nine. The relative frequency would be nine twelves, which simplifies the three fourths, which we all know is 0 0.75, which we also know is 75%. One thing that we have to keep in mind is that all relative frequency must sum to, if you're talking about decimals, they have to add up to one. If you're talking about percentages, they have to add up to 100%. So depending if you're doing by row, by column, or by table, will determine whether or not um, if it's adding, which, what parts are adding up to that one or 100. So let's go ahead and practice. So. Um, example one, we have 92 people were asked how they travel to work. <coughs> Excuse me. 35 drove a car, 42 took public transportation, 8 rode their bike, and 7 walked. So go ahead, pause the video, and fill out the relative frequencies for each of those. All right, the first thing we have to do is the relative frequency of a car. So if we know 35 people took a car, that ratio is going to be 35 over 92, which is approximately 0.38. So that is 38%. For public transportation, <clears throat> we would do 42 over 92, which is approximately 0 0.46, which is 46%. Next, we have bike, and that's 8 out of 92, which is approximately 0 0.09, which is 9%. And finally, we have seven. So seven's pretty close to eight, so it should be a very pretty close number. So here we have 0 0.08, which is 8%. So just basically you're calculating the percentages of basic um, relative frequencies. So now let's talk about two-way tables. Now we've, we've looked at two-way tables before. So we know that two-way tables summarize categorical data, right? It summarizes categorical data into two categories. <clears throat> we call those categories categorical variables. Oops, spell it right. Categorical. And within those categorical variables, you have different values. You can have two values, you can have three values, you can have as many values as you want, just as long as you have two categorical variables. We also talked about how we can analyze relative frequencies and access possible associations and trends in the data. And then finally, we talked about how the frequency is just the count and the relative frequency is the ratio or percent. So let's take a look at this example. <clears throat> we have a survey of 100 students and we're provided this two-way table, and we can see the categorical variables are gender and what basically what they do after school. So after school, 
we'll call it activity. And more specifically, they want to know if it's watch TV or do homework and for gender, if we have girls or boys. So if those numbers are all frequencies, right? We don't have any ratios, we don't have any percentages. So we're just talking about frequencies. So we have something called a joint frequency. So this is a new vocabulary where we haven't really put this definition out there, but joint frequency is the value of the intersection so the joining of the rows and column. So you can see what's highlighted here is this section right here. So any numbers that consist of the combination of both categorical values is going to be called a joint frequency. So we're talking about both categorical variables. So they ask, how many girls watch TV? Well, we can see that there's 48 girls that also watch TV. How many boys do homework? We can see there's six boys that also do, that do homework. So go ahead, pause the video and list two other joint frequencies. All right, the other two, there's only two more is you could say boys who watch TV, which is 34. And we also can say girls who do homework, which we see is 12. So that's the joint frequency. Let's talk about marginal frequency now. So marginal frequency, focuses on the total in a row or column. So think of what the word margin means. So when we're talking about the margins of the paper, we're talking about the edges of the paper, right? It's something where the, the main text is not included. So that's the same idea with marginal frequency. We're focusing on the totals that either occur in the columns or the rows. It is not a combination of um, the two categorical variables. It just focuses on one of them. So for example, we have these two right here. Those are for the, uh, the rows. These two right here are for our two columns. And then notice in this corner, we have this 100. Now this 100, just so you know, it may look like it's a marginal, but I want to point out that it's actually neither joint nor marginal. It doesn't really have a name, it's just the overall total. So go ahead, pause the video, and uh, answer the three questions. All right, let's take a look. So how many total girls? Well, that's 60. How many total do homework? That's 18. The other two is total boys, which we know is 40. And then we also need total watch TV, which is 82. So that's a little bit newer when it comes to vocabulary that we haven't really talked about yet, joint versus marginal. You just kind of need to know what they represent. All right, let's keep moving along. So now let's talk, let's focus in on relative frequency charts. So we looked at regular frequency. Now just remember relative frequency is where you can express it as a ratio as percent. We mainly deal with percents, but sometimes you also see the ratio or the decimal. Okay, one thing to remember is that each makes a different contribution to understanding the relationship. So that's something important to remember. All right, now this first table is talking about the relative frequency by row, meaning we're splitting the two rows up and then we're comparing the gender for each row. So for our first row, we have watch TV. So we see the total is 82 over 82 because 82 people um, said that they watch TV when we get home. When we split it up by boys versus girls, we do 48 over 82 for girls, which is approximately 
uh, we'll just say 59%. Now, boys, you can, we've talked about before how you can calculate it one of two ways. You can do the actual ratio of 34 80, over 82, or we know that's going to have to total up to 100. So we can just do 100 minus 59, which we know is 41%. So let's take a look at the homework row. So only 18 people said that they um, they they did homework when they got home. So let's calculate those percentages. So for the girls, we have 12 out of 18, which is approximately 67%. For the boys, we could just do 100 minus 67, which gives us 33%. So that is the table by row. Okay, we have two other tables. So just remember with by column, you're splitting it up by column. So you split it up between boys and girls and then it, within the girls, you compare TV to homework. Within the boys, you compare TV to homework. And then the last table is the rel relative frequency by table, so by total. So for this one, you're going to be comparing a combination of those. So Go ahead, pause the video, and fill out those two tables. All right, so let's go ahead and dig deeper into the column. So we know that 48 girls out of 60 uh, said they, did, they watched TV when they got home, which is 80%. And then we also saw that 12 girls, or again, you could do 100 minus 80, which is 20%. For the boys, we had 17 out of 40 say they do, they watch TV when they get home, which is approximately, or exactly, sorry, not approximately, it's 85%. And then we can just do 100 minus 85 to get our 15%. So when you're looking at the frequency table, that it was a little deceiving, right? Because if you especially compare these two numbers, right? So, well, 6 is half of 12. So you would probably think, well, if 6 is half of 12, then that percentage should also be half. But when you look at the percentages, it's actually not, right? They're actually fairly close to each other. It's just because there were 20 less boys being surveyed than girls. Let's take a look at the last table. So like I said, for this one, we're comparing the combination. So we're gonna be using 100 as our denominator. So for my first box, girls who watch TV, that's 48 out of 100, which is just 48%. Then we have 12 out of 100, which is 12%. For boys that watch TV, that's 34 out of 100, oops. 34 out of 100, which is 34%. And then finally, we have 6 out of 100, which is 6%. Now, <clears throat> notice that the total columns are still included, but there's nothing filled out. And that's because you're not going to be totaling up the rows or the columns. You're going to continue to use this corner to establish your percentages. So for example, there were a total of 82 people who watched TV, so that would be 82 out of 100, which is 82%. And then there were 18 people that said they watched TV, so that's 18%. For the column, 60 girls were surveyed, so that's 60 out of 100, so that's 60%. And then 40 boys were surveyed, so that's 40%. So the key things that I want to point out is that there, the totaling up to 100 hap happens in three different places. So the first place that it happens is in this joint area. So these four boxes, the, they add up to 100. The second place it happens is in our rows total. Okay, the 82 and 18 also add up to 100. And then the third place it happens is in our columns total. 
So those also add up to 100. So it's not like you take all eight boxes and say they have to add up to 100. It's going to show up in different ways. All right, so let's go ahead and answer some questions about these frequency tables or relative frequency tables to make some associations. So number one says, of all the students surveyed who do homework after school, what is the relative frequency that they are boys? So this tells us we are separating out the ones that do homework from the ones that watch TV. So that means I am going to look at the rows. So looking at my rows, which is right here. Okay, I'm gonna highlight that so we know. I can see that the percentage that are boys is 33%. Okay, for the next one, they said of all the girls surveyed. So now they're separating out the girls from the boys. So now I'm going to be looking at columns. So let's highlight that a different color. So this is the column I'm going to be focusing on. So I need to focus on the ones that say they watch TV, which I can see is 80%. Number three says of all of the student surveys, so because it's all student surveyed, I'm gonna be looking at the one by table. They wanna know what percentage are boys that prefer watching TV. So boys that prefer watching TV, oops, that's not the highlighter, is this section right here. Okay, and I can see that is 34%. Go ahead and try, pause the video and try the last one on your own. All right, so for the last one, it says of all the students surveyed. So again, I'm gonna to continue to use that table, that last one, so by table. What is the relative frequency that the boys that preferred doing homework after school. So this time, for this one, I am going to be focusing on the boys that prefer doing homework, which is this section right here, which I can see is 6%. All right, let's move on to the next page. So this next page, um, you have a somewhat filled out frequency table and you need to answer the questions 1 through 11. My recommendation is that when you get down to question 5, maybe try creating a relative frequency <clears throat> table. Um, one by row, one by column, and one by total to help you, although you don't have to. So go ahead, pause the video, and you can work on that. All right, so let's first fill out this table. So the first thing I can fill out is my total column because if I have a total, a grand total of 1,316 and have had um, 325 and 285 so far, the rest that's left over would represent the missing. So that's going to be 706, so 706. Um, for this missing piece right here, you can do it a couple of different ways, but you should have gotten 528, because remember, 123, 123 plus 167 plus 528 is going to give you the 8, 18. For this section here, uh, I know if my grand total is 325, and I need to subtract three, 123 from 325 to get 202. And then once I have that, I can now add up this column to get 498. Now we have to answer the question. So first question is, what is the joint frequency of the third class passengers who did not survive? So the joint frequency would remember is the middle portion that includes both categorical variables. So for that, I'm looking for third class passengers who did not survive. So that is going to be this one right here. So that is 528. 
joint frequency. So joint frequency of first class passengers who did survive. So again, I'm looking at that middle. So first class who did survive is going to be this number right here. So 202. What is the marginal frequency of the passengers who survive? So marginal frequency is my edges. So I just want the passengers who survived. <clears throat> so that is going to be this number right here, which is 498. And then last but not least, we have the marginal frequency of the passengers who were third class. So passengers who were third class, so that's gonna be this number right here, and that is 706. Okay, let's take a look at our relative frequency. So for our relative frequency, the first class passengers that did not survive, so we are splitting up the passengers into groups. So this one is going to be by row. So I need to use my total for the row of first class passengers, which is 325, and divide that, or not divide that, but I'm going to take the number that did survive out of that group, which is 123, and I'm gonna divide that by 335. So, First class passengers, we're, we're separating by their passen the classes that they were in. And then I'm looking strictly at first class and that did not survive. So that's 123 over 325. When I, <clears throat> when I calculate that, I get to be about 38%. Again, you can round to the nearest whole or the nearest tenth, whatever you prefer. So now we're looking what percent of third class passengers survive. So now I'm looking at the third class passenger row and I see that total is 706. The ones that did survive was 178. So my fraction is 178 over 706. When I divide, I see that that's about 25%. So again, this one was also by row. What percent of survivors were second class? So now we're separating the survivors versus the non-survivors. So that's going to be by column. So my, I look at my survivor column that has a total of 498. And of that 498, 118 were second class. So I turn that into a percentage and I get about 24%. Number eight, this time we're looking at who did not survive, but we're still separating by column. So my total for not survived was 818. And we wanna know first class, that's 123. So that ratio turns into the percent of 15. What is the relative frequency of the total passengers? So now we're doing by table. So my, I'm going to be using the grand total of 1,316. I wanna know the total passengers that were second class. So all together for second class, there were 285 passengers. And when I turn that to a percentage, I get about 22%. And number 10, what percent of the total passengers survived? So again, I'm going by table. I'm looking at my survival rate. So I'm still using that 1,000 316, but I look at the total passengers who survived, which was 498. When I change that to a percentage, I get about 38%.
So last question says, provide the evidence using relative frequency to describe who is most likely to survive. So if I'm thinking about who is more likely to survive, I really wanna focus on my survived column and see what class ends up with a higher percentage. To do that, I'm gonna use my, my column information and set up my ratios and change them to percentages. So my first one for first class, this is gonna be 202 over 498. And 202 divided by 498 is about 41%. Second class, I have 118 over 498. So 118 divided by 498 is approximately 24%. And then my last one would be 178 divided by 498, which is approximately 36%. So this ends up being one of those situations where if you add up the, four per the three percentages, it does not add up to 100%. Um, so this is one of those situations where we're going to have to do an unconventional rounding and you really have to make that decision on which one makes the most sense to round unconventionally or you can round to the tenths instead of rounding to the whole percent. Um, in this case, I would probably change the 41% to 40% just to make it even out, um, but it's still around the same. Um, but to get a more accurate, you maybe round to the nearest tenth to make it just a little bit more accurate. There is another way to look at it as well. So we looked at it by column. You could also separate it out by um, row and compare each class um, survival rate or not survival rate. So um, let's go ahead and separate that out as well. I'm gonna move it and create a new row. And I'm only gonna focus on the survivor. So this is going to be first class, second class, third class, and then obviously this will be our survival or survived and not survive. So if I focus more on by row, my ratios and percentages are gonna change a little. So for example, first class passengers that survived out of all the passengers is 202 over 325, which is approximately 62%. Whereas 123 out of 325 is approximately 38%. So we can see out of first class, they were definitely more likely to survive. Looking at second class, so this time I'm going to compare 118 to 285. And that percentage is about 41%. Whereas those who did not survive 167 out of 285 is about 59%. So this tells us second class was not as likely to survive than, um, than survive. And then finally third class, we would have 178 out of 706. And that is about 25%. Whereas 528 out of 706 is about 75%. So again, third class, if you had to break it up and just compare third class, um, whether they survived or not, they again were less likely to survive. So the only class that was actually likely to survive is first class because when you break it down by row, their survival rate is higher is the only one that is higher than the non-survival rate. When we looked at just the survived column though, um, it was a, not as clear um, who was more likely to survive. Um, but this definitely gives a much better picture 
of who is more likely to survive. So sometimes when you're answering association questions, you have to kind of look at the data a couple of different ways. Um, remember, we can do by row, we can do by column, and we can also, we could have done also by total or by table as well. But I feel like with what we've seen so far, we have enough evidence to state that first class was most likely to survive. So we can make that association. There is an association between survival rate and the class that you were in. Um, remember, we say things are associated when they have a statistical relationship. So in this case, we were able to see that the statistics does support that idea of that first class was more likely to survive than not survive. So that's it for this lesson. Make sure you submit for points and thanks for watching.